history they outline. When one door closes, another door opens. But we so often look so long and so regretfully upon the closed door that we do not see the ones which open for us. Alexander Graham Bell said the quote, the quote is about missed opportunities and resistant change. It can relate to the thesis because Alexander Graham Bell and many other inventors took the chance. So how is it that they hear me? Well, what actually happens is when you speak, your voice makes air particles move in a way this wave travels to an air or anyone that's listening nearby. Or it can travel into a microphone. And what a microphone does is it has a little piece of material that moves because the sound wave or the air pushes it and makes it move. It moves in exactly the same way as the sound. And on the back of this little piece of material is a magnet. This magnet, when it moves, creates an electrical signal, an electromagnet. Now what that means is that as the magnet gets closer, it pushes an electrical signal, for example, up, and as it gets further away, it pushes the electrical signal down. So you end up with an electrical wave that mimics exactly the sound wave. So what's actually happened is it's converted the sound of you speaking into an electrical way. It's as if your voice is now in electricity. And now that your voice is in electricity, you can do all kinds of things. For example, we can move at the speed of light. As this electromagnetic wave goes down the cable and arrives at their telephone, it goes into another electromagnet. And this electromagnet does the exact same thing as the first one, but reversed. So it creates a magnetic wave that mimics the electrical wave that remember is in the form of your voice and this moves another magnet which is connected to another piece of material which is a speaker and this piece of material moves in exactly the same way as the electrical signal as it moves it pushes the air and the air then moves as a wave in exactly the same way as the electrical signal Phone calls involved an operator who'd manually connect you to the phone line of the person you wanted to talk to. These would eventually give way to automatic switches of the kind patented as long ago as 1891 by Allman Strouger. As transmitter tech improved, the candlestick phone became increasingly obsolete, replaced around the late 1920s by models like this one, which crammed a transceiver and receiver into one handset. Mobile telephony dates back to 1946, when it became possible to make a call from your car, so long as you had loads of money and hardly anyone else in town was trying to make a call at the same time. One year later, Bell Labs' Douglas H. Ring sent a memo describing something much fancier, a hexagonal cell network that could make countrywide car phones a reality. Early 70s and Bell Labs was still working on cellular tech, but was still focused on putting phones in cars. Ultimately, it was Motorola who captured the public's imagination, in 1973 demonstrating an entirely untethered phone. 
The first cell phone, the Dynatac 8000X, hit shelves a decade later.